What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today we're gonna to talk about Pagan Online, specifically the starter classes, which one you should choose when beginning the game. I get this question on stream a lot because once you pick a starter class, like let's say you start with Anya here, all the other characters are locked until you unlock them. And you have to go through like a process. It might take you five to 10 hours per character, depending on how experienced you are. So your starting class is kind of a big decision, at least for a little while. So hopefully this video alleviates some of those questions and maybe you can see which character is best for you. One of the first non-starter heroes you unlock is Lucian, which is by far my favorite. And I'll show some gameplay at the end of the video, maybe and talk about just my general thoughts on everything. But anyway, back to the starters. Let's go ahead and start with Anya here. We'll go in alphabetical order, I guess. She's the vampiric, blood-sucking, necromancer type class, like a blood necro from Diablo 3, Vladimir from League of Legends, kind of archetype. You do a lot of damage, you send out your abilities, and you life leech off them. There's some really cool mechanics that I love about Anya that maybe a lot of people don't utilize when I see other streams and videos. If you use her like ultimate ability, which I call it, her heartbeat, you can actually hit the heartbeat and it increases the size and damage of the explosion per hit. It's these little details with every class that they can really synergize the skills and abilities together since you can't really intertwine your abilities in this game. They can make what you do have, your main, your core kit, just really interesting. And that kind of echoes throughout all the classes. Like there's weird synergies with both. And if you're at the Hero Forge, it doesn't always tell you all the information. You wanna like go into the game and read like the text. Another cool one is uh, Bloodsucker. You send out this blood bat, it goes through the enemies and returns to the caster. Now the life leech is 5% of damage done per enemy hit. Anya, in my opinion, takes the most damage. Now she's, she's melee, but she's basically like a ranged whip class. So she's like mid to long range melee, I guess. You really need to utilize her Bloodsucker ability to bring the bats back to you to get health back. In addition, her vitality rush, like every class has a dash ability. Her dash ability heals her when she goes through enemies. So you get 2% of health back every enemy you dash through, just kind of like, I guess that's why like the blood necromancer comes to mind. So you really have to kind of line up your abilities with your blood sucker with your vitality rush. She has a blood bolt ability. She sends out a powerful AOE that roots enemies in place. Now this can set up all kinds of combos like with the heartbeat that we talked about. This can set up combos with her swarm. Swarm is my favorite. It's like this bat bleed. It's like a fire bat ability in D3. I love it for zoning, slowing and stuff. So you can kind of stun them and set up other abilities. You can stun them and leech with your bats and your dash or whatever types of combos you have. Overall, Anya is a strong pick. I would say she is the most skill-based pick out of the three, just because it's a little bit harder to manage all your skill shots. And you might burn more potions with her than the other classes. She has a little bit more to do to maintain her health versus the other characters, in my opinion. Typically with starter classes, you get like a mage archetype and she's way different than a normal traditional mage. And I love it. That's why I started Anya because you get the first character is like a barbarian. The second dude is like a tank and then she's like some vampiric chick. It's pretty awesome. So I went with Anya as my starter and I don't really regret it. She also has an ability with like a knockback called spinning slash and she could push back enemies with it. And it's pretty cool sometimes you could like knock them back into like say your swarm ability or back into the heartbeat for the big explosion if you notice like they're actually walking out of it. There's lots of um, skill and you'll see it more at a high level. She's probably arguably the sexiest of the three anyway. So anyway, let's move on. <laughs> So if Anya is the squishiest out of the three starters, I would say Istok, the Midgar tank, is probably the easiest to play, the easiest to survive. He's bulky, man. He's tough. He's strong. His dash, he doesn't have like a traditional dash like the other classes. When I said that, I actually forgot that Istok has a shield of righteousness. He gains a temporary shield and stun immunity to himself and allies. So once they add multiplayer, you'll be able to buff your allies with this. This is really powerful. A lot of bosses chain CC you and it can get super annoying. And he can basically avoid that with a well-timed shield. So the shield isn't just for defense. And this is kind of what I was saying with Anya. A lot of the spells have duo purposes and they synergize with other abilities. So you want to get hit with the shield. When they hit your shield, you gain more damage basically for your other abilities. So it's kind of a cool mechanic where on the surface, it's just a normal shield that protects you, but it actually has other implications, it actually buffs your allies and empowers your other attacks. Like for instance, when you use your ultimate abilities, which I'm calling them the Thunder Fist, summon a giant fist from the ground, dealing massive damage, consuming all the static charges 
for an additional bonus. So you gain static charges by depleting your shield, right? So you can see it's just a sick combo, man. Like he has a taunt ability, so you can like taunt everyone, pop your shield, and then you know all the enemies around you are gonna hit and you're gonna get maximum static charges. And then you pop your ultimate, the Thunder Fist, and yeah, you get it. Super synergy. I love, I love it, man. It's just super fun. He is slower paced than the other fighters, but it does add to the feel and the look of the character. I mean, he has a giant mace, so he should be a little bit slower overall. Um, there's weight to it. You can really feel it. His mace throws another skill-based ability like Anya's bat. You throw it out and it returns to you like a boomerang effect. And you know, you have to like turn your body, move your positioning to get the most value out of it. Anya gives her health back. Istok stuns enemies. So this is kind of cool because he can stun in a line. His right mouse button has like a massive thunder slam. Stun enemies in a line and then damage them all in a line. It's kind of a satisfying combo. That's one of the most combos that I do is I kind of backpedal a second, pull the enemies together, stun them and then thunder slam them down. Your left mouse button is just a generator on the surface, but if you look closer, it lowers the cooldown of your Shield of Righteousness. So even your generator has some kind of implications to your other abilities. When your shield's on cooldown or you find yourself low on health, surrounded, taking too much damage, you can always use your overpower ability. It's a giant AOE radial attack that heals 3% life per enemy affected. So he has an AOE heal, stuns shields he's pretty good overall and probably the safest starter if you're new to um arpgs or like moba movement type games or like you just want to chill like istok is your man slow and rock steady baby the king barbarian starter i kind of wrote him off in the beginning and went with anya because i thought he was just a normal barbarian and in a lot of regard, he is just a normal barbarian, but it plays so beautifully. I, I wish I would have started with him. He's super mobile. His dash is the lowest that I've seen out of the three, but his dash is on a two second cooldown. So you find yourself actually super mobile throughout the battlefield. He's like that brawler class. His left mouse button is a generator. The third hit does like an AOE like 360 cleave though. So make sure you get that third attack off if possible. I started out with his generator type abilities his left mouse button because it's really important with his trait so when he uses an ability like his gun or his whirlwind ability basically he gets a buff and you can see it on screen here it's called warrior focus and his like next attacks heal him so you have to weave in his abilities and his general attacks it's a beautiful synergy again i love that all the builds work together it's one thing to synergize your abilities but when there's like synergies on top of synergies that just makes it even more interesting and I can't wait to see what other characters are available in the game. So you want to dash and use your abilities and then use melee attacks in between those abilities. You don't have to use all three but it typically I would do like one ability and then like three quick attacks dash and then one ability and then three quick attacks kind of thing. So this barb has a gun apparently and he pulls it out, does a double shot on the enemies. You can use it while moving. It's really fluid. It adds a slow effect to the enemies, but that slow effect powers up the whirlwind. So the whirlwind does bonus damage to slow targets. So you'd like kind of run in, double shot and then whirlwind around the targets. And that's one of the combos I like doing very much. He has a jump stomp. Leap Quake ability, jump forward, stomp the ground, stunning enemies. This can interrupt all kinds of casters and boss mechanics, but can also set up your execution ability. Unleash a massive frontal cone that instantly kills most enemies. The instant kill threshold is 50%. So it's like an execution. So he's cool. Like I was saying, I just like the dashes and the extra mobility and weaving in your attacks with other attacks it's almost like keeping up a focus and restraint bonus for my diablo players out there you use your ability use your generator use your ability use your generator and you kind of weave in your other attacks within each other as well you can stomp in stun them use your right mouse button slam the ground deal massive aoe damage and generate more fury so it's just about being a barb man asserting yourself on the battlefield and kicking some ass anyway guys that's gonna be all for me today i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you have a better understanding of what you start with once you do pick one of the starters they're all locked and then you have to unlock the other ones let me know what class you started with and let me know if you wish you went a different direction i suppose <laughs> if you're curious on how to unlock more of the classes 
you have to do missions to get keys and then you use those keys to do assassination missions and then every specific assassination mission will give you shards for that class i might do a let's play if i unlock a super rare character that i've been looking forward to but that's going to be all for me today. Make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed. If you want to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash bloodshed. There should be a link up here somewhere on the screen or down below in the description. I just updated more and more Diablo builds and I have it organized in a better way than I thought before. It was starting to get like just messy already. This is the bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> Yo, it might be cringe, but it's been our outro since the beginning, so that that's our outro. Just peace, all right?